In March 1896, an expedition led by Dutchman Anton Neuvenhuis left Pontianak on the west coast. In May 1897, he reached Samarinda on the east coast. He was the first European to cross Kalimantan. It had taken 14 months. On April 1, 1996, the 20 participating countries in Camel Trophy Kalimantan embarked on their own unique journey, hoping to complete the first east-west crossing by vehicle. They had 22 days. Two sit in Balikpapan in East Kalimantan, the Indonesian part of Borneo, the gateway to the 17th adventure of Camel Trophy. One of the last of the big adventure that you can do, and so we want to take part. I really enjoy working together with people from all over the world, so I'm looking forward to the Camel Trophy 96. The adventure element is uh, what's attracted me most. Um, it's going to be very hot and it's going to be very humid. Oh, I think that it will be marvelous. Mud, insect, wind. Happy. You're ready and uh, greetings to everybody. <laughs> Dawn broke on the morning of April the 1st. Tension mounted. The 20 teams and support crews made the final preparations to the 38 Land Rover Discoveries and Defender 110s before embarking on their historic 1,850 kilometer journey through the heartland of Southern Borneo. The vehicles rolled out of the grounds of the Dusit Inn together with a police escort to drive through the oil-rich town of Balikpapan. An historic moment for the town folk. The convoy travelled by government ferry across the vast estuary at the mouth of the Sungai Samoy. They were welcomed and cheered on by hundreds of locals as they began their epic journey through the heart of Borneo. Eighty kilometers northwest of Balikpapan, the teams begin the first of the special tasks. These are the competitive elements of Camel Trophy, each designed to test the participants' stamina, mental ability, navigation, and 4x4 driving skills. Yeah, I think you've got to relax a bit. And, uh, you know, it's good to win the competition, but you keep the vehicle for the next three weeks. There's no point trashing it from day one. Oh. Oh. The only thing we've broken is the exhaust, so I'm very pleased that there's no other serious damage. 
Obviously, it's not a good idea to punish the car. <laughs> but, you know, when you get into a task, it suddenly goes out the window that, you know, you want to do well. You get so pumped in your underarms, you just feel that your fingers are giving way. You can't hold on. But after resting a little bit, you kept on going and then got on the other side and took the rope around my neck, which is pretty hard, and then the wheel. And that was real tough. Right now, it's just the experience I get with it. It's hard as hell when you're doing it, but afterwards, it's, it's great. adventure you must be a little bit mad yeah <laughs> torrential afternoon downpours make conditions even more hazardous and give a taste of what is to come it was a grueling first day which continued late into the night. After seven tasks and 12 hours, the Russians were leading, the Greeks close behind in second place. The participants snatched a few hours sleep before beginning the 1,850 kilometer drive west into the unknown. The adventure began on fairly easy, navigable tracks, giving the teams the opportunity to enjoy the forest that flanked their path. But it wasn't long before they reached the mud. We like uh, adventure, so we, we want to do everything the best, and if here everything is going to be hard, I think it's better for us. We enjoy it. Everybody's working together. There's, there's great camaraderie between them, and uh, that's, that's what camel trip is about. Uh, especially when the rain comes, the, the track is hard and, uh, until the rain comes, and, and everything is just slippery, and we can expect much more rain every day. The mud is really, well, just look at my feet. It sticks to everything. Put forward, please. Ready? It became uh, a tradition our, of our Camel Trophy 96 to have a very uh, complicated and uh, long night task. <laughs> now we start it. Yeah, we just want to fix this bridge so we can cross our way because it's not looking very safe, but let's, let's see. The team slowly began to get used to each other. Hard work, mud and lack of sleep were to become their everyday routine. Gradually, they began to control the progress of the convoy as they headed deeper into the forests. Um, today, Team South Africa, Team France, um, Japan and Belgium. We are on the pre-scout team, we're leading the way. And Go ahead, now at this moment, yeah, as you can uh, see, we're on a new track. We've got to see if it's a good track and the right one we have yeah, to follow to get our destination in the end. So we are on the pre-scout team now. Uh, we can find fi five teams uh, to, be, to clear this area uh -huh. to, for the, the car can go. Uh -huh. 
Okay. Yeah. Why are you jumping up and down? Okay, people, We're trying to see if it's strong enough. Some people up here. Uh, because we have to get all the vehicles over here. So we have to try to see if this one can hold the vehicle. The vehicle is almost, uh, the, the, the Amber is almost weighing about two tons. Yeah, two people. So that's why we all are standing here jumping. It's very funny. One, two, one, two, one. Jump, 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 jump. Hey! hey. We tried to prepare some bypass because there are a lot of people working there and two people can touch one shovel at the moment. That's why some of us try to do something here. In case of broken bridge, we can use this way. Yeah. You don't have you don't have this inflow. It's too much. And here we make the run. If it's windows down there, you've got five meters down there. Sam De Beer of Team South Africa visualized and marshaled a solution. Eight meters above the jungle floor, the teams worked to reconstruct the old bridge. Down below, another group toiled to push through an alternative route. They laid sand tracks in case the ancient trunks were unable to bear the weight. In the end, both routes worked. But so successful was De Beers engineering that after just three hours, the first vehicle was able to inch its way across the gorge. You have to trust your equipment. Yeah, more cable. And uh, you have to trust your, your buddy, your teammate, and also the other guys okay. on the team. Man of Norway. <laughs> you gonna fly home? <laughs> I wanna fly home. <laughs> You're making a fool out of us. Get in the car. <laughs> How does it look on the other side? The first major river crossing was a big test. Muhu Balusu over the Sungai Jalau. Event coordinator Mark Day gave advice to the teams. Why don't we just winch it backwards? We're going to build this road this side with sand track. We're going to build the road over there with sand track. We better drive straight on and straight off, OK? At first, they struggled to work as a cohesive unit. But eventually, working into the night using a local pontoon, the teams managed to get 38 vehicles across the Swollen River in 12 hours. By the night of April the 5th, the convoy had covered 450 kilometers and arrived at Muratewa. They'd already overcome broken bridges, washouts, and treacherous rutted tracks, but it was only a small glimpse of what was to come. From here, the route had only been seen from the air. The Polish and French teams took the opportunity to enjoy the nightlife the local culture and cuisine, and to meet the local people. Ça 
coś takiego. A ten zero, ten jest zero. The convoy was soon back on the road. Overnight camps were often made on narrow tracks with the convoy stretched over several kilometers. It was usually the only opportunity to grab sleep. For some, it was never enough. Oh, I had a bath last night. I said a bath, it was in the river. Um, it felt absolutely heavenly. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, good. Huh? <laughs> I lost my momentum because I was waved to slow down from the guys back there. Their cars weren't moving forward, so I slowed down and I got the I got out of the turbo. The plan is everybody behind is going to give a push and see if we can get going. Okay. Jen, let's try with. You. This is better than filtered water? Uh, it tastes much better, yeah. We're keeping one can full of filtered water and one can with this stuff, if we can. And we use a filtered water for tea, coffee, boiled stuff, and we use this just for drinking. It tastes better. When you want to cook a spaghetti, you must bring Spaghetti, salt, oil, tomato sauce, chili, red chili, and uh, cheese, Italian cheese, very, very, very Ooh. cold water, and uh, you cook uh, for five minutes, put uh, all together, and you can eat it. Buon appetito! Years of erosion on the unused tracks left ravines the size of amphitheaters. We do have a big problem. The road is washed out totally and um, it's going to be a lot of work. We've just uh, come on the pre scout today and uh, come to another couple of problems. I think that no, it's not a problem. And what we're going to do is get together, um, just the pre-scout teams, and discuss what we're going to do. Mm. Only work, uh, hard work, and after we can go. Huh? Very quick, very quick. If we try this and this won't work, then we also... We're working very well together. The only problem is that everybody wants to express himself and so there's very many ideas and it's very difficult to decide what, what are we going to do and then um, to work only on one idea and not on five. Well, as the first people to see this, I feel like it's, it's a really great feeling if you can get across to a point where usually nobody can go. Good morning. Good morning. How was the night? Mm, wet and short. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wet and short. <laughs> morning. How was the night? Uh, wet. Torrential rain had once again created a sea of mud, and the participants were waking up to extreme conditions after a few hours snatched sleep. They were in Mura Untu, on the banks of the Sungai Baluta. Well, 
apparently there was a bridge here during pre-scout, and uh, as we see what we're standing on, it looks like it moved. Flash flood, I guess. Um, so I guess what we're going to do is we're going to try and see if we can move that, possibly reposition it, use part of the use the existing bridge that was here. Hopefully we can move that. If not, we'll have to try another option. Here we go, now we're going downstream. <laughs> so far we've got the, uh, the holes cut in the bridge and they're, they have the, uh, the straps on. We've got two winches, we're going to get a third winch attached to that piece of bridge and we're going to try and drag it upstream about 50 feet. Okay, we're going to go That's the next question. Yeah. Is, is there anything we're actually going to be able to accomplish? No, this is just occupation of therapy. Despite the efforts to resurrect the bridge, it was all in vain. For many, there was disappointment that such a challenge wasn't going to take place. But time was ticking away, and Pontianac seemed a long way off. On the banks of the Sungai Barito, the decision was taken to break out the Camel Trophy raft units and ferry the vehicles three kilometers upstream. Teams had the lengthy task of assembling the raft units, carried for the duration of the event in two Land Rover Discoveries. For many of the team members, it was an opportunity to relax, enjoy the beauty of Indonesia, and reflect on the hardships of the past few days. It wasn't long before yet another major river crossing had to be overcome, Idens Crossing. It was a case of drive in, winch out. At times the rivers looked like highways. Quite a jump, huh? Not bad, eh? <laughs> I think uh, we are still behind in time, but uh, it's uh, one for them and nothing for us. Well, today we had about uh, two river crossings. We had one where we had to build a bridge. We took about four and one quarter of an hour. Working around the clock, tiredness crept in and mistakes were made. Over went the Canary Islands vehicle dragged onto its side. The teams rallied together to pull the vehicle back onto its wheels. No window break. You're not hurt? No, everything is fine. Everything is mixed here, but fine, no problem. Okay, thank you.
In the searing heat, Frenchman Yves Truel offered a few lucky people the chance of a mobile shower. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. After the relentless mud, winching, and endless river crossings, the participants had the opportunity to enjoy a special task at Tewe Camp. Four groups of five teams competed against each other to get their team vehicles across the Sungai Kahaya, using the raft units and in the shortest possible time. As well as rafting, the special task involved teams working closely together, winching vehicles down and up both banks. Despite it being a competition, it was considered by many as a form of relaxation and something different from the daily routine of mud and hard work. How's it going, Ken? It's going good. I think we got a pretty good time going right now. The winning group included the teams from Denmark, Norway, Greece, USA, Japan, and Switzerland. Finish time. That seemed to go very well. Yeah, he did, indeed. A good time. Good team. Winch in. The torrential downpours and electric storms continued for the duration. The team searched late into the night for part of the Trans Borneo track that had been unused for 15 years. Wim, what's happening? We're looking for the track. I don't know. Is it that a risk? We are re-scouting, trying to find the way on GPS points, but the way is very unclear. It's only a very small track. So we have to discuss. We have two options now, and we're going to try one, see what it does. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The track seemed to have been swallowed up by the engulfing forest. This, this just comes yeah, back here, right. and we go. We just got to try and follow that down. We're just trying to continue on, just trying to see if this is heading in the right direction. Um, we've not really seen a, another junction that's suitable, so we'll keep heading this way for the moment. But it's pretty overgrown in here at the moment. It's washing, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Doesn't seem afraid, huh? No. How are you doing tonight? I'm fine, but tired. Because we didn't sleep much tonight, last night.
and feel fine, but sometimes it's warm. It's a bit too warm. And, uh, when we have to work in the street, I become dizzy. Do you regret to be here? No, I'm happy. <laughs> Tiredness was beginning to affect everyone, but the teams continued to cheer each other along. Very comfortable there. Wake up! Uh, Wake up! Time to go! <laughs> Eventually, the track was found. Once again, it was back to the old routine of mud, winching and overgrown forest. Startled locals, who hadn't seen vehicles for a long time, gazed in wonder at the convoy. Can you call the doctor? He needs stitches, okay? When I see you during the day, you're almost smiling all the time. Well, as long as I'm smiling, I'm happy. And I think uh, that's also influence on somebody else and to motivate somebody else. It's a shame that we're here to enjoy, not, not to tense up. Thank you. Thanks. Peter, how is it going today? It's very good. It's very interesting. This um, 13 years ago, cars travelled on this road, so we're the first one. You can see it's jungle. It's good. Uh, first foot, first foot for the convoy. Um, we need, uh, we need, uh, we we have to find uh, the way on the bridge. Roger. <laughs> Over. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Ooh, late nights, hard work, good food, <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> Tell me why, why you like to go places like this? It's a thrill of adventure. It is to see the unseen. You see, many people can look, but I see it through my eyes. And it's just, look, it's so beautiful. It's so unique. Looks very steep and handsome. First car to come over. Hello. The water is good. Go <laughs> 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 ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go! go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Silence, please. Habitat. Silence. Three, Nick, this looks pretty serious. Is this the sort of thing you dream about in your worst nightmares? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <bro. laughs> Ooh, I'm fine. Really? We're gonna have a nice little dig. Yeah, it's a, it's a big task, uh, but it's not beyond the capabilities of the convoy. When you have a hundred people, 
highly motivated. One, One two, two, three. Very enthusiastic. Three. Keen to get on with it. And particularly since they know that we are some days now behind schedule, they'll be through this like a, hopefully like a dose of salt. So, you just stick around. <laughs> Two three cool. One is working down, one in the middle, and one up. Take this one, cut in two. Uh, it's it's good day for for swimming pool, but <laughs> much more worse for working. This is uh, Balik Papan. Well, this is the trophy. This was Tebui, and today is now this. I'm still quite fat, I think, yeah. Day rolled into endless night. What time is it now? Raining time. It's uh, 10 minutes past 9. PM, of course. It's late and it's the fourth or fifth bridge that we have to cross or the ditch that we have to cross today. But the, the aim is to get somewhere. So it, it doesn't matter how many bridges, you just have to get there. So it, it keeps fun, yeah. You might be interested to know that we've covered in the last 11 days 520 kilometers. <laughs> another day, another briefing. Round of applause, guys. There's just one minor problem. <laughs> We've got nine days to go and 1,480 kilometers still to be covered. <laughs> so, we, you probably realize, we're going to have to push ourselves just a little bit harder. And rather than me pushing you, it'd be far preferable for you guys to push yourselves. So, if we were here yeah. today, tomorrow will be. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. make only yeah. three up to two months. Yeah, we're going to make that Pontianac special bus. <laughs> and on Christmas, on Christmas this year, oh, yeah. the Bantum and Samba. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! The convoy enjoyed some time to relax and stock up with essential supplies in the town of Tewa. They mixed, laughed and played with the locals, happy to see the smiling faces of the children who'd been waiting for days to greet them. An unforgettable moment for both the village and Camel Trophy. Yeah, I'm very happy because all the all small children and funny for me. I like children a lot. Kawa Torpe, Kalimantan. I, I would think it's a kind of a memorial uh, of famous uh, people, of some famous people, and uh, maybe it's a kind of um, a place where uh, wedding uh, uh, happened. After this brief rest and change from routine, the convoy was soon back in the forests, on the road again.
first find a little bridge and we cross over, but we try to go through the water, but the water, the, the, this little lake is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and there is a big hole over there, and all the cars are getting the nose underneath. So it's going to be, a, we will take very long to go through here. Driving, winching, and snatching their vehicles over obstacles, the convoy endeavored to push on to their final destination. Couldn't be better. Nice little uh, swimming pool to wade our way through. <laughs> okay, the idea is to, to get in as far as possible on our own, um, but without risking the car, and then hook up to the three cars in front, which are all roped together, and then they all pull off and pull us through. Hopefully. Yeah, uh, first gear straight through. Piece of cake. See you on the other side. <laughs> The experience gained over the past few weeks could be seen by the slick maneuver of the UK car through another river. The teams were still cheerful, but aware that they were falling behind schedule. Rolling, 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 keep the convoy going. Rolling, 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 go So, muddy night. Ali, but we are still moving. That's that's good. That's good. Hello, I am Gianpaolo. Greetings to everybody. I am. Uh, I love the the plants. I love the nature. And the, normally in the night, I park here. What's happening? It's a little bit gully, and a lot of uh, obstacles, uh, mud, a lot of mud. How do you are stuck it? Bye! You can try. James, yeah? One. Um, in the last, well, last about a week, I think we've done about 30 kilometers. Not very impressive, is it? Push! Push! Yesterday we even had five kilometers. That was really good. Five kilometer, five kilometer a day is the average. Fucking mud! Yeah. Hang on. Oh, Stop! Stop! <laughs> Stop! 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 We're gonna get there by time. Little delay. <laughs> Little delay. <laughs> We're still in time. <laughs> You're still hoping to get there one day. You see how do I look? I can show you. Over here, this mud belongs to Polish team. But that, it's from Dutch team. And of course, this one over here, look, Kamel, uh, you see, it's quite different. It's from Swedish team. We have a big problem. Why? There, are, there are five or six eggs in this house, bad house. An obstacle of a different nature. What do you do? We we will make other way, another way. Yeah. Yeah. We decided to stick more a little bit, a little bit more to the left, and uh, think about conservation too. The convoy overcame the last few mud holes, washouts and flooded rivers before the track improved and they began their final push towards Pontiana.
After 20 days, tiredness was really taking its toll, and the German and Japanese vehicles went over on their sides. I think we were too fast, and um, we didn't see the curve, and we just fell over. The red clay tracks were lined by thousands of cheering children. Families gathered in fascinated groups to view the bizarre spectacle. The convoy passed under the shadow of Gunung Batadea, a 2,000-foot-high volcanic limestone plug which rose dramatically from the flat landscape. A significant moment. It meant they were getting close to their destination. To the people I've met, thanks, you've been great friends. Um, to what I've learned, I will keep forever. Camel Trophy, it's, it's, it's something. It's a feeling. You can, I'm going home, I'm going to tell the people we sat in the mud and was dirty and it rained. That's it. But you can't give them the feeling. And the feeling is something I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. The teams arrived at Pantai Gosong, just north of Pontianak, unbelievably only 24 hours behind schedule. The final set of special tasks, which included vehicle maneuverability, teamwork and physical fitness, ended with a spectacular group canoeing task, which signalled the end of Camel Trophy Kalimantan, 1996. It was a remarkable event. They had overcome all kinds of obstacles in all types of weather conditions and had made it across Kalimantan. They started as 20 teams and finished as one. It was an adventure they would never forget. Winners of the Special Task Award, the team from Russia. Winners of this year's Team Spirit Award, Voted by everybody on the convoy is the team from South Africa. And the winners of the new Land Rover Award for driving in special tasks and the overall winners of Camel Trophy 1996, the team from Greece.